Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the New Testament, 66 days, on day 48, so we'll be reading 2 Corinthians 6 through 11. So, 2 Corinthians, a second epistle to the church in Corinth, chapter 6. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of, of salvation. Give me no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, and watchings and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. For now recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children. Be ye also enlarged. Be ye not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? It's a great verse, and I've also experienced this myself, and am currently experiencing it as well. When you are around people who are unbelievers, or people who are basically of the world, have uh, no desire to live for the Lord, or even believe in the Lord, um, and they have, you know, bad mouth speaking bad things all the time and always negative it drains you it literally drains you i know it does me when i'm around that it's an energy thing and when you're around some people who are unbelievers and constantly speaking evil and constantly being negative it affects you yeah no matter how hard you try being with unbelievers, being around unbelievers will affect you in some way. They may, you know, sin and tempt you to sin also, or lead you into sin. Either way, we're supposed to not be yoked together with them as they will dull us, right? As they say, iron sharpens iron. If we're with unbelievers, they're just going to make us dull in a sense. Um... And so, yeah, I, I can attest to this. When I'm around people at church who are uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I feel a lot better. But when I'm around unbelievers, I just, I feel their evil negativity um, kind of bring forth mine that I have inside me, um, mine that I try not to let come out so take it take my example and, and just don't if you can don't have any fellowship with unbelievers with people who are always negative because they're just going to drag you down and dull you so i mean it's kind of hard when you have a job where you have to work with people who are unbelievers but if you do, do have a job where you can work with uh believers and you go hang out in your spare time with someone who is not a believer that uh, that you should avoid so it's a great verse and it's also true continuing on 615 and what concord hath christ with belial or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement hath the temple of god with idols for ye are the temple of the living god as god hath said i will dwell in them and walk in them and i will be their god and they shall be my people wherefore come out from among them 
and be ye separate. Separate, the Bible says. Be ye separate. None of this altogetherness. Right? Yes, we are called to love one another. Yes, we are called to pray for one another. Yes, we're called to give the gospel to people. But if they don't want to hear it, we need to pray for them. Move on. Still pray for them. But be separate from them because they will drag us down. So it says, be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So I just want to quickly share with you something personal, like I was telling you about uh, being around negative people all day, literally all day. Uh, I feel drained currently, right this very moment. And I try not to share a lot of personal stuff, but this is a great chapter um, that I can use my situation and just share with you that we need to be careful who we are you know are around and, and not let it get to us because well it's going to affect you i know it affects me but luckily i'm in the word and when i start reading the word i feel a lot better and especially after i'm done reading the word i feel a lot better and after i'm done praying i feel better so if you do have to be around people who are negative all the time like me then that your best solution would be to not let what they say get to you. Number one, number two, to be in the word. Because if I didn't have my Bible time, I'd probably be going down the road uh, of negativity and let negativity affect me even more so than it already is. So just want to share that with you to, well, be steadfast, right? And be separate, says the Lord. And uh, the best remedy for that is the Bible and is prayer. That's the best remedy for any situation, honestly. Moving on, 2 Corinthians 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. Receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and to live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you, great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort, I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God, that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that he sorrowed to repentance, for ye are made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this self same thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceeding the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you, whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. I just want to also point out, we've seen 
a couple times now about fear. It's just like the fear of the Lord in this context. The fear of the Lord does not mean to be scared. It means having a reverence and respect of Almighty God. Yes, respect. If you think that you deserve respect or others deserve respect, don't you think God deserves the more respect? That in of itself is the fear of the Lord. You're respecting God Almighty. You're reverencing God Almighty. Treating Him as God and not a genie in a lamp. So that's what fear in this context in most contexts mean. Continue on, Second Corinthians 8. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the church of Macedonia, how that in great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and said, and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desire Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace always, uh, also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have be begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased, and ye be burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, and their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that hath gathered much had nothing over, and he that hath gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the hearts of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward, of his own accord he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not only that, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is ministered by us to the glory of the same Lord, and declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance, which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. For we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches in the glory of Christ. Wherefore show ye to them, and before the churches, the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. 2 Corinthians 9 For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them in Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Macedonia come with me, they find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you, and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had notice before, that the same might be ready, as a matter of bounty, and not as of covetousness. But, I, but this I say, he which sorroweth excuse me, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he hath purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. 
And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that he, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whiles by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. 2 Corinthians 10 Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on the things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such a one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not to make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. In Second Corinthians 11, would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, for indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear this by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might bear, might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. I have committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted, because I have preached to you this gospel of God freely. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service, and when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man, for that which was lacking to me the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied, and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do... That I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light.
Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? Number one, Satan. People, you know, the world thinks of Satan as, you know, red with horns and a pitchfork. Actually, Satan is an angel of light. I mean, he he appears good, just like, you know, wolves in sheep clothing. They appear to be holy, appear to be righteous, appear to be Christian. But inwardly, they are like a wolf. Same with Satan. And, um, and his minions can do that too. So just be careful. Satan can, he's a deceiver. He's the deceiver. So of course he can transform into something to throw you off. That's part of the deception. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So yeah, right there, that second verse there just says, you know, Satan can transform himself, so can his ministers or his minions or servants, whatever you want to call it, devils, demons. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise... Yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, wherein suffer any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. So, he's trying to say, yeah, these people are speaking about themselves. Here, let me do it. As an example of, you know, what not to do. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labor is more abundant. And stripes above measure. And prisons more frequent. And deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils by the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I am I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed for evermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Erta. Eratus, the king, kept the city of Demosthenes with a garrison desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket I was let down by the wall and escaped his hands. All right. That's going to be it for today. There was some, well, every chapter had some great verses. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, there's lots to learn from these epistles, these letters. Uh, sent to this church in Corinth. Um, lots to lots to learn. And that's why I love reading the Bible because even though you you read through the Bible, there's still every time you read through it, it um, gives you a reminder. Pieces fallen more into place, or you have a deeper understanding of things, or a new understanding. So. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, trust in him, wait upon him, and you'll never be sorry. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So thanks again. Take care and God bless.